All right, so you're here because you have decided to either quit smoking or quit chewing tobacco uh, totally free today with hypnosis. And I want to thank you for being here. I am very honored to be able to offer this to you today totally free of charge. I'm wanting to help as many people as I possibly can to be com become completely tobacco free for the rest of their lives. So I, I don't want to mess around. Let's get right to it. I want to explain, first of all, that I do not have mind control. Yes, I'm a hypnotist. No, I cannot make you cluck like a chicken or bark like a dog. And no, I cannot make you stop chewing tobacco or smoking cigarettes. The reason that you stop is because it's what you choose to do. It's what you want for yourself. If I had mind control, to be honest with you, I probably wouldn't be here right now. I'd probably be laying on a beach somewhere drinking sangrias. So it's not really even reasonable to believe that anyone possesses mind control. I've got to put that out there because I don't want you to waste your time today. I don't want you to bring my success rate down. If you don't really want to quit, this would be a waste of your time and you wouldn't be successful. This isn't something that you're just, you know, going to be able to say, oh, let's see if this works. I'm telling you right now it's not going to work if you don't really want it to. So don't waste your time and please don't, you know, bring my success rate down. I'm doing this because I want to see as many people succeed as possible. Another common misconception about hypnosis is that, you know, it, people can become stuck in it somehow, like, you know, people become some kind of hypnotic walking zombies. Not at all possible. The worst case scenario with hypnosis is that you relax or deeply you fall asleep. That's really not so bad. You know, what's really cool about this is that you're going to just be able to be lazy once we start hypnosis. All you have to do is be lazy. You get to let me do all the work to quit smoking. You can actually let me do every bit of the work once we get to that point and I'll tell you when. You know, you're not going to be a walking zombie. You're going to open your eyes when you're finished and you're going to be a better version of you. You're going to be the version of you that you've really wanted to be. And that's why we're all here. Another common misconception about hypnosis is that, you know, I can get secrets out of people somehow or it's some kind of a lie detector test. You know, this isn't something that you come to the, you, you're not in my office here today with me, so I can't ask you questions. So that maybe doesn't really apply to this. It's important to me that you understand what hypnosis really is though. So I want you to know that, you know, I can't ever force you to do anything you don't want to do or any of, any of my clients. I can't make anybody do something they don't want to do. And that includes answering questions. So during hypnosis, if someone is, you know, asked a question and they don't want anyone to know the answer, they either lie or they don't answer it just like they would any other time. That's another common misconception. Finally, the last misconception that I want to go over with you is that there are people that are unhypnotizable. That's also not true. We've all experienced hypnosis before and we are all capable of it. A form of hypnosis that you've probably experienced before is what I call highway hypnosis. You know, sometimes when you're driving and you kind of don't remember part of your drive, where you're sort of in this trance state, you know, kind of like autopilot, you know, um, sort of zoned out is what some people might call it. That is a form of hypnosis. Basically what happens during that time is that your conscious mind kind of begins to wander you start thinking about other things maybe you're thinking about you know your plans for the weekend or you know what's on your to-do list or whatever grocery list I don't know what you're thinking about you're thinking about something else and you're not really paying attention to driving you're still totally capable of driving you haven't lost control of it you're doing it subconsciously okay you have a conscious and a subconscious mind you know when you're driving you still stop when the lights are red. You still go in there green, even though you're not really paying attention to what you're doing. Hypnosis is much like that. So during hypnosis, you may or may not be listening to my voice. You may or may not be consciously paying attention to me. The good news is, is that your subconscious mind hears every single word I say, and your subconscious mind never stops protecting you. So you don't even have to pay attention to what I'm saying during hypnosis, because I'm going to be addressing the subconscious side, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about later. I don't have any control over people. The reason that pe people become hypnotized is because they allow themselves to be hypnotized. So those people that think they are unhypnotizable, well, kind of they are if they don't want to be. I can't make somebody become hypnotized. You become hypnotized today because you want to, and you stop smoking or you stop chewing tobacco today because it's what you want. Everyone is hypnotizable as long as they want to be. Everyone is capable of quitting smoking if they want to. Everyone is capable of quitting chewing tobacco if they want to. You know, if you want to be hypnotized today and you want to quit tobacco, you can do it. And I am here to assist you. I'm here to help. 
couple of things we have to go over before we really begin. I do want you to have a pen and some paper that you'll be able to take notes on for a little bit later on. We are going to cover 100% today. Okay, so we're going to do hypnosis, which is the 90% part of the mind. I'm also going to be doing some things to cover the conscious part of the mind. So I want you to have, you know, a way that you can keep notes. Um, normally in a private setting, I send a client an email recap after the session and they have everything in black and white from that email. That's not something that's really possible for me to do today. So I'm asking you to um, have that commitment to yourself to take notes. And you know, I'll have some screens, some slides that'll pop up that you'll be able to push pause and, and keep notes that way. So um, expect that. Also, I am asking that you make sure that you are in a place that's comfortable, quiet, no distractions, you know, turn off all electronics, all cell phones you know I just want you to be able to have this time for you this is a commitment that you've made to yourself and part of the commitment is committing to the 90 minutes completely with no distractions or interruptions so I ask that that happen before you really proceed along with the video how's this gonna work well around 90% of what you do every day is actually subconscious and that's a really big deal okay 90% of your day that's a huge number around 90% of what you do is automatic so things such as blinking and breathing you know that's something that everybody does all day long automatically without really consciously choosing to do so right you can consciously choose to blink faster you can consciously choose to take in a nice deep and easy breath and that's something that you do with conscious thought and effort things that are effortless things that are automatic such as blinking and breathing and maybe nodding your head while I'm talking to you right now, those are subconscious. That's around 90% of what you do every day. You know, if you have an itch, you scratch it. You don't think about it first, you just scratch it. Think of driving alone. When was the last time you thought about when you should start pushing on the brake in order to get stopped in time? You don't think about it, you just do it. You know, you're not really thinking about most of what you do. You're automatically involved in these things. If 90% of your behavior is automatic, and if 90% of your behavior is subconscious and you're wanting to create change in your behavior, then doesn't it make more sense to address the change on the 90% side? Of course it does. And so that's why and how hypnosis is so effective. That's where we create the change. We create the change within the subconscious mind on the automatic side. So you will automatically be a non-smoker. You're gonna automatically be completely tobacco free after hypnosis today. Think of it this way. I know with smoking cessation clients, I often have them tell me that they kind of have the desire to smoke a cigarette and the desire not to have one at the same time, which I totally understand. So if you've kind of been you know, a little bit confused about that, I understand that you do want cigarettes kind of at the same time. That doesn't scare me. I just want to be sure that you really want to quit smoking or quit chewing. If you have tried on your own to quit before, especially multiple times, that's a pretty good indicator that this is something you really want. You know, so if you view it kind of like a filing cabinet where, you know, like your desire to stop smoking has sort of been like the first file in the cabinet and your desire to not have a cigarette has been sort of somewhere behind that. Basically what we do with hypnosis is we flip the files. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? What we're going to do is we're going to bring to the forefront of your mind for the reasons that you want to be healthier, happier, have more money, smell better, have more energy, you know, all the wonderful things that happen from being tobacco free. We're going to bring those to the forefront of your mind and so that's going to make it automatic for you to not smoke a cigarette automatic for you to not have a chew that's the simplicity of how hypnosis works every hypnotist sort of has their own style their own unique way of going about things um, what i do as a hypnotist and as a transformation educator is i teach people actionable specific and very easy ways to disassociate negative feeling and associate positive the reason that's what I focus on is that I really believe wholeheartedly that our behavior follows our feeling. What I mean by that is that, you know, when you feel positive, when you're happy, when you're confident, when you're energetic, you know, things just kind of tend to go well and you automatically make good decisions, right? Without effort. When you experience a negative emotion, such as fear, doubt, anxiety, anger, those are the times that we're more likely to automatically have negative behavior. We can certainly use our conscious mind in those moments to have positive behavior. It's absolutely possible. It just takes a lot of effort to do so. You know, if you're angry, you have to use your conscious mind to behave in a calm and collected way in those moments. Uh, as a parent, I mean, I think any parent can relate to that. A lot of us can relate to that that aren't parents. It's just, it's just the way we are. So if we have more control over the way we feel subconsciously on the 90% side, then how much more control do we have over our behavior? 
Our behavior follows our feeling, and that's why I want to give you tools today. I'm going to include that for you today. Uh, a very actionable, easy way that you can learn to have more control over the way you feel that ultimately helps you to have more control over, the, over your behavior. For smoking cessation clients and tobacco clients specifically, how this sort of plays out is, you know, when I've had clients come in before and they've told me that they've quit smoking, you know, for some period of time, I've had people tell me that they've, they, that they didn't smoke a cigarette for years and suddenly they picked up one for whatever reason. And of course, when somebody tells me that they didn't smoke for, you know, six years or something, I always ask them why they started again. That's a very reasonable question to ask. And almost every single time, the answer is that something stressful happened in their life. Now, I understand that it's difficult to deal with stressful situations sometimes. What I want my clients to know that uh, about smoking cessation specifically is that what happens in those moments isn't necessarily the stressful situation that caused them to pick up the cigarette again. It was the panic about not knowing what to do instead of having a cigarette that caused them to pick up the cigarette again. That feeling of panic, that negative feeling, is what drove them to the negative behavior. You know, when they're in that stressful situation, sometimes people are like, oh gosh, oh my gosh, what do I do? I don't know what to do because I used to have a cigarette. I, I, I really think I want a cigarette right now. It's, it's not about the stressful situation, it's more about that panic. So what we can do then is have a conscious action plan as to what we're going to do instead of having a cigarette in those moments no matter what those moments are, because we all know we're going to have stressful things happen in our life. That's something we have no control over. Of course, what we do have control over is our own behavior. What we do is have a conscious action plan so that you know what you're going to do instead of having a cigarette in those times. Then simply you will not have a cigarette because you won't have the panic enter. You'll have had already made that plan and that commitment to yourself to some other type of behavior. This is something we can really get into in depth in private session. Obviously, this isn't a private session today, so this is something you're going to have to kind of do on your own, and I have no doubt that you're going to be able to do this. It's very, really very simple. What I want you to do is with your notes and your pen, you know, take the time to really just kind of do some evaluation and identify what's, what's unique in you. I want you to ask yourself when, where, and why you used to smoke. You know, those could be things such as I smoked because I was bored, I was angry, I smoked um, at the office, I smoked after I had a cup of coffee, maybe after dinner, um, I smoked for attention, uh, whatever, whatever your reasons were, when, where, and why you used to smoke. You've got to identify those things first and foremost so that we can create the conscious action plan on the other side. All right, now that you've identified for yourself when, where, and why you used to smoke, it's going to be very easy for you to come up with replacements for cigarettes in those same moments. You take that list that you've just completed and you determine when, where, and why you used to smoke. Now you come up with something you're going to do instead of having a cigarette in those same times and places. All right. And that can be all kinds of different things. I can't tell you what to do because I don't know you. I don't know what your life consists of. I don't know what fits into your world. I can give you some ideas. You know, it's very easy for people to, you know, these things. You, you've got your phone. You can always text somebody. You can always make a phone call. You can play a game on your phone. You can enjoy taking in nice, deep and easy breaths. You can really enjoy the feeling that you get from the improved function of your lungs. That's always something that's nice. You can always have a glass of water. Okay, so if you were driving in the car and you used to smoke in the car, you can keep a bottle of water in your car and be committed to having water instead of a cigarette. You can sing along to the, to the radio. You know, you can be committed to keeping your hands on 10 and 2. There are all kinds of different things that you can do instead of having a cigarette. The imagination is what we've got here. It's limitless. It's just got to be something that works and is functional in your life. So, you know, just kind of take some time to identify what, what fits for you, what works well for you, and be committed to those things. What's going to happen is you're going to have so much more confidence now in those times because you already know what to expect. That, that expectation, having that expectation makes it very easy to meet it. Before, if you've never done this, you never set a clear expectation for yourself, then it was really hard to meet. That, that's what brought up upon the panic, was that lack of clarity, that not knowing what to expect or what to do was what caused the negative feeling, then in turn may have caused the negative behavior. 
All right, this is where it's going to get exciting for me because this is the part of the video that I get to share something with you that you can literally apply to absolutely any area of your life. This is what I get very passionate about. And this is a portion of the things that I might share in my trainings. So, you know, I just kind of want to establish a couple of things. First and foremost, would you agree with me that you could say things to people in different ways and get different reactions? I'm guessing that you're nodding your head yes right now. Everybody says yes to that. You know that you can say things to people in different ways and it creates different reactions in them. If you believe that and you agree with me in that, then aren't we all hypnotists? Of course we are. Everything that comes out of our mouth is a suggestion to someone else. We have power to influence other people. We all do. I just happen to have a skill set that allows me to make sure that people are doing that in a positive way the way they want to, <laughs> not in a way that they don't want to. I don't have mind control, remember? We are all hypnotists. You would agree, I'm sure, that you can say things to someone else in different ways and get different reactions. If you agree with that, then you most certainly agree also with the fact that you can say things to yourself in different ways and get different reactions. So what I wanna to talk to you about now is affirmations. I want you to use affirmations because I'm telling you they work. Please don't run away. I know that it's very common for people to be resistant to affirmation. I totally understand why. This is going to be different, I promise you. Please bear with me. In the end, it's going to make a lot of sense. I don't teach affirmation in a traditional way. I'm going to go about this a different way than I, I think that you've probably ever heard before. Before we really begin getting into deep conversation about affirmation, though, I want to I want to relay one more thing to you. You know, we all move in the direction of our focus. So physically, we move in the direction of our focus. You know, if you imagine driving and maybe you have your hand up here on the wheel and you're, you're driving along and you look over your shoulder, doesn't your hand just kind of naturally pull over to the same direction? You know, we physically move in the direction of our focus. We also mentally move in the direction of our focus. So if somebody says something to you like, you know, whatever you do, don't look now. What's the first thing you do? The first thing you do is look. You know, I never use the word don't with my son because a don't dialogue is one of the worst things a person can have. If I was to say to my son, you know, hey, don't play in the street. If I go do something else for just a little bit and I turn around, where am I gonna find him? <laughs> I mean, most parents are like, oh, they're in the street. Of course, not every time. We do move in the direction of our focus. It's a, it's a life transformative thing to never use the word don't with children because really all they all they do is what they're told they don't really process the word don't what they hear is playing the street so I'm very specific with him and I just simply tell him what I want him to do so instead of saying don't play in the street I would say to him hey I want you to be sure and stay in the yard and then he's just in the yard it's the same way with yourself okay it's a law of nature that we move in the direction of our focus mentally so if you, any of your inner dialogue, the things that you're saying or thinking to yourself, if any of that stuff is what you don't like about yourself, the way you wish things weren't, or the way you hope things don't become, stuff like that, that's a don't dialogue. And because you move in the direction of your focus, it causes you to stay stuck there. It's not a fun place to be. So I want you to know that affirmation is a great way to get out of that. I'm going to share with you rules because I have very specific and structured rules for how affirmations have to be used in order for them to actually work, okay? Um, it's not uncommon at all for people to be resistant to this. You know, I, I commonly have clients say to me, oh yeah, I tried that, it didn't work for me. I know why it didn't work for them without even having to know what they said. The reason that it didn't work for them is very clear to me without even knowing what their affirmation was. And we'll get there. So, um, it's very important that your affirmations follow rules in order for them to be effective. The first rule is that affirmations have to be positive. That's kind of a no-brainer. Of course, if we say something negative to ourselves, it would create a negative feeling, which in turn creates a negative behavior, which we've already discussed. That's kind of, you know, common sense. We have to say positive things to ourselves in order to create a positive feeling. The next rule of affirmation is that it has to be repetitive. You know, the more you do something, the more automatic it becomes. Consider driving for a moment. When you first learned to drive, you had to really think about what you were doing, okay? You know, I, it's kind of a funny memory for me because there was at one specific time that I didn't start pushing on the brake soon enough. And so I had to like slam on the brake in order to not 
go through the intersection. Um, no one got hurt, and it's you know just kind of a funny memory for me. It's something that I had to really think about at that time when I was so young and I had never done it before. I had to really consciously think about what I was doing. I can't tell you the last time I thought about when when I should start pushing on the brake in order to get stopped in time. It's automatic. It's, it falls into that 90% category, okay? And the reason that it's become automatic, the reason that it's subconscious, and the reason it's on the 90% side is because I did it repetitively. So the more you do something, the more automatic it becomes. We want to use the repetition of affirmations to retrain you to automatically be thinking and feeling this way. So that's a very simple thing to do too. Just repeat these positive statements. The third rule is that it has to be present tense. If you future pace your affirmations, then you're not changing anything now. That's procrastination and that's negative. You know, I will blah, blah, blah. I will lose weight. I will become more organized. I will stop smoking. It's not creating any change now. I'm sorry, I'm not impressed. Your affirmation has to be stated in the now for it to create change in the now. It creates change in the way you feel in the moment as long as you are using present tense speech structure. So there will be no I wills, no I wants. Now let's think about that for a minute. Some people would say that using or saying I want, you know, like I want to lose weight or I want to stop smoking. Some people would say that's a positive statement. I disagree because when you're saying I want to lose weight, well really all you're doing is pointing out to yourself that you don't currently have what you want. So really that's a don't dialogue. I want to stop smoking is saying that you're a smoker. That's a don't dialogue. It no I wills, no I wants positive, present tense, and repetitive. So far, those are our first three rules. The last and most important rule, and this is what everyone else tends to leave out, this is why what I teach is completely different. So far, everything you've heard, you're like, yeah, 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 I've heard it. Trust me, this is, this is what's gonna make the difference for you. There are not a lot of hypnotists in the world, okay? There are not a lot of people who understand how the 90% part of the mind works. It's kind of a big deal. The subconscious mind is either yes or no, it's accept or reject, it's black or white, there's absolutely no in between over there. There's no gray area. So the last rule of affirmation is that it has to be believable. If you are telling yourself something you don't believe, your subconscious mind is going to reject it and you're wasting your time. What's the point? I don't want you to waste your time. I want you to use this as the valuable tool that it is and be sure that you're saying things to yourself that you believe. You can't lie to yourself that's kind of ridiculous. You have to be using believable affirmations in order for them to be accepted and in order for them to create a positive feeling. The most important part of this is that if you are saying affirmations that you don't believe, I don't care how positive they are, they could create a negative feeling if you, if you don't believe them. The best example I have of this is a client who came to see me many years ago who had been told by someone else, she was a weight loss client, She'd been told by someone else to look into a mirror and to repeat the statement, I am skinny, as an affirmation. It pisses me off, okay? How do you think that made her feel? It made her feel terrible. She did it repetitively because that's what someone else had asked her to do. And the more she did it, the worse she felt about herself. And then of course her behavior followed her feeling and she comforted herself with food. She actually gained weight from doing that. Affirmations can be more harmful than helpful if they don't follow these rules. You have to believe what you're saying in order for it to create a positive feeling. You know, the first clients I ever started using affirmation with were smoking cessation clients. And the affirmation that I asked them to repeat was, I choose to be a non-smoker for life. I had a great deal of success with that, so much so that I, I have almost every client using affirmation now because it can be customized to every individual and I want it to be customized to you. We're going to talk about that here in a moment. You know, I want you to say something that is self-inspiring. You have to ask yourself why you want to be a non-smoker, why you want to be tobacco free. How will you benefit from this? Become very clear about that and that is where we're going to build an affirmation. You know, let's, let's use the lady who is saying I am skinny for a moment. Nobody ever bothered to ask her why she wanted to lose weight. Somebody just assumed she wanted to be skinny. For her, it had nothing to do with that. She wanted to be healthier. When I asked her why she wanted to lose weight and she communicated to me that her knees hurt and that she was you know, on the verge of, of some diabetes problems and that she you know, had a hard time walking up steps and all of these things, she was communicating to me that her desire was to be healthier. So I asked her, 
how would it feel to repeat the statement, I choose health? You know, drastically different than I am skinny, right? She could repeat, I choose health, and I asked her to do so every single morning before she even got out of bed at least 10 times in a row and to intentionally associate a positive feeling with that statement. She could feel proud of herself. She could feel a sense of accomplishment. She could enjoy just happiness. She could certainly feel empowered from choosing health. If she was feeling those ways before she even got out of bed, what kind of a breakfast do you think she'd have? Without effort, without trying. Automatically, the behavior follows the feeling. You've got to use this as a way to establish a positive feeling and let the behavior just takes care of itself. You have to know what inspires you. That's got to be customized to you. You know, affirmations can be used for absolutely anything, everything, and I want you to know that. You've just got to become very clear about what it is that you want for yourself because affirmations are a fantastic way to stay away from the don't dialogue and only be, fo be focusing on what you want. Remember, we talked about that law of nature that we move in the direction of our focus. You know what the good news is? The strength is equal both directions. Okay, so when people have a don't dialogue, they just sort of stay stuck in this terribly vicious cycle. Not having a don't dialogue is, is fantastic. You know, you stay stuck over here. You're, you're, stay, you're stuck in a, a cycle of progress, and that's truly exciting. So, you know, there are so many things that you can accomplish with this. You've just got to become clear with yourself about how it can be used. Um, you, you know, for today, we're going to stay focused on smoking cessation. You come, you become clear with yourself about why you are smoke free today, why you're tobacco free today. It might be because you want to save money. It might be about health. It might be about setting an example. There are all kinds of wonderful reasons that people, that people make this choice. You become clear about that and you create an affirmation that meets all of these rules and you use it every single day. I can't stress how important it is to use this. This is the glue that makes it stick. Okay, I have had hundreds of clients now and out of all of the clients that I've had for smoking cessation, very few have come back for follow-up sessions. Almost all of my clients quit in one session. Anytime somebody calls me for a follow-up, the first question I ask them is, have you been doing the affirmations? And every single one of the people that's called me for a follow-up has said no. You know, I truly want to empower you today. I want to empower you to be able to take this information and apply it anywhere you want to. I want you to know that you can use any affirmation that you choose. You can say one now. You, you can say one a different one five seconds from now. You don't have to use just one. You can use countless affirmations. You know, it's not possible to be too kind to yourself. You know, it's really not. You can be as kind as you can be. And affirmation is a great way to do that. You know, the key to success in life in absolutely every area of your life. The key to success is just being kind to yourself. I wanna share with you one of the affirmations that I use as what I call a, a go-to affirmation. The reason that I use this is because it's applicable to every area of my life. I use it as a catch and correct. So when I catch myself, every single time I catch myself having a negative thought, you know, the don't dialogue, the, you know, oh my gosh, I look fat in my pants today, whatever it is, we all have that stuff, okay? Every single time I catch myself having some kind of a negative thought about that, about anything, I instantly correct it as soon as I've caught it. I say to myself, health is happiness. And I repeat that several times. Every single time I catch myself having a negative thought, I repeat to myself, health is happiness, health is happiness, health is happiness, health is happiness. And it, it pulls me right back over here to this focus. I simply refuse to treat myself that way. You know, of course I have negative thoughts, everyone does. I just don't stay stuck there. I won't allow it. Okay, I'm gonna give you just a few more examples of affirmations that you might use in other areas of your life because I would love for you to leave this experience today with more than you expected. Uh, one of the things that I love to say to myself that has absolutely nothing to do with health or anything really specific, I love to say to myself, most of what I worry about is only imaginary anyway. Every single time I say that, I feel a little bit lighter. It just feels good to me to say that, you know, and everybody's different. So that might work for you. It might not. You've just got to, you know, sort of do some evaluation. It's about the way you feel. You use these statements, these ideas intentionally to associate positive feeling. Another thing that I do is I have about a 45 minute drive, you know, commute to and from work. And so as I'm driving home specifically, that's a time that I love to do affirmation to make myself a better parent. I want to be a very patient and loving parent.
So a couple of the words that I, I just repeat these words to myself, I'll just kind of in the back of my mind, they're just sort of floating over and over and over again. And I just repeat grace and composure, grace and composure, grace and composure. As I repeat those words, I am training myself to automatically be more graceful and more composed in every area of my life. You know, of course, my intention with that is to be a better parent. It's awesome when it helps me in other places too. Definitely one of my favorite affirmations of all time. And the reason this is one of my favorites is because I used to worry way too much about what people thought of me. And I can't tell you the joy that I have in having a freedom from that these days. I'm going to be really honest with you. I don't give a damn what anybody thinks because I am confident and I am happy with who I am. So if I have a moment where I sort of feel like somebody's judging me, what I say to myself is, as I choose not to mind, it just doesn't matter. Yeah, I just love to have that freedom from that worry and that stress that I used to carry about what other people thought of me. You know, another one that, you know, it doesn't have to be totally serious all the time too. You know, one of my affirmations that I use daily and it's very helpful to me because I, I do want to look good. And so, you know, when I'm maybe out to eat or something in, in or just at home or wherever, I can repeat to myself, eat right, look tight. And it helps me to be consistently making good choices in what I'm eating. It's kind of funny and it works well for me. You know, there's just some examples of affirmations and different ways that you can use them. You know, I've done some exercises and I do training on how you can create affirmations that are customized to you. You can get an affirmation app on your phone and they can be fantastic. I'm not saying they're not. You know, you can get one of those, you know, go to the bookstore and get one of those flip chart things that has like an affirmation of the day. They can be fantastic. I just want you to know that 365 affirmations someone else came up with are not going to meet all four rules for you. You do have to be sure that they are meeting the rules and create a positive feeling in order for them to be effective. All right, so now that we've gone over the rules of affirmation and you have more of a clarity about how that can actually be helpful to you, uh, I want you to know that you can use affirmation in that work that we did earlier with the conscious action plan. So affirmation is always something you can do instead of having a cigarette. You can always repeat to yourself, I choose health, I choose health, I choose health. Health is happiness, health is happiness. I accept health, I love health, I enjoy health. I'm beginning to enjoy being healthier. There are so many different things that a person can say. Just make sure that it works for you as an individual. All right, now that we have talked about the conscious part of the mind, we are going to begin hypnosis here really quickly. Um, what you can expect with hypnosis, you know, I don't have any spinning circles. I don't have any dangling pendulums or anything that I, you know, wave in front of people and tell them that they're getting very sleepy. This is not like the movies, okay? This is reality, and the reality is that you are here to participate today to quit smoking or to quit chewing. All you have to do is want that to happen and let me do the rest of the work, okay? Be sure that you have no interruptions, no distractions, and just simply take some time to relax. All you really have to do is relax and let go. So imagine for just a moment that you are squeezing your hand so tight that you couldn't possibly squeeze it any tighter. You know, anybody can imagine that, right? If you can imagine squeezing your hand to the degree that you couldn't possibly squeeze it any tighter, then you could also use your imagination to allow your hand to relax to the degree that it couldn't possibly relax any further. That's a pretty nice thought just thinking about it. Everybody is capable of that. I would like for you to achieve that type of relaxation throughout your entire body during hypnosis. So just allow your muscles to just relax and let go and you know you can kind of think about it like kind of like your your body's just kind of sinking or melting into whatever supports beneath you. There, there's really no right or wrong way to do this. You know, everybody's experience with hypnosis is different. That does make it a little bit difficult for me to tell you what to expect because I don't know how many of you are participating and everyone's different. I can tell you that you may have different sensations such as feeling like a heaviness, you know, like a sinking or a melting feeling. Your body might actually feel heavy. You might feel light, like you're kind of floating around. It's very normal. That's all That's all kind of very normal. It's, it's also normal and to be expected that your hands or fingers or even your arms and legs, toes might get kind of tingly or even sort of a numb sensation in them. That's, that's also very common. You know, sometimes people see things. They have like visualizations. Uh, specific visualizations. I hear a lot of the time people say that they have like a, 
you know, a, sort of a cloud or swirls of colors, kaleidoscopes of colors that they see. You know, everyone's different. There's no wrong way to do this. Sometimes people don't have any of that. You know, you might hear everything, every single word I say during hypnotic state. You might kind of check out and not really be paying attention to me, much like when you're driving, and that's totally okay. You don't have to focus on what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> you can just totally check out if that's what you want to do. This is truly, you know, one of the laziest times you can ever be. You can just be as lazy as you want. There is truly no effort involved for you from this point on. All it is is your level of commitment, not effort. There's a difference. So, you know, we're going to get started here in just a moment. It, it, it's just something that you can know that there's no way you can mess it up. You know, you can listen, you can not listen. Um, just enjoy it. You know, it can be a really enjoyable process to just be lazy. Okay, so get comfy and uh, you're not going to see my face for a few minutes here while you're just being lazy. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and just kind of listen to the sound of my voice for a little while. And, and at some point, you might sort of realize that you're not really paying attention to me anymore. You might have kind of wandered off in thought. That's totally okay. It's very normal for people to sort of wander, sort of daydream, um, and then kind of realize that they're not paying attention and sort of maybe check back in, listen a little bit, drift away again. Like I said, you don't have to focus on me anymore. From now on, you can just be lazy. All right, let's get started. You can start by just closing your eyes and taking just a moment to only imagine what it would be like to squeeze your fist so tight that you couldn't possibly squeeze it any tighter. Anyone can imagine that, and so just as easily, you can imagine how nice and how automatic it is to relax your hand to the degree you couldn't possibly relax it anymore. This is the type of relaxation you can look forward to now as we move through hypnosis today. It can feel so good to just take this time for you because just for now, nobody wants anything. Nobody needs anything. Nobody expecting anything. Nothing for you to do but relax and let go. I like to start relaxing at the bottom of my feet. It's really very easy to relax the bottom of your feet, isn't it? Just as easily as you relax to the bottom of your feet, you can silently inside yourself whisper the word, relax. You can continue to whisper this word silently inside yourself, or you can let your ankles drop and relax now. As my ankles drop, my legs just seem to go with them. Your feet and legs carry you everywhere you go each day. And that makes it easy to allow your feet and ankles and legs to just drop and relax. Relaxing deeper and deeper. Just remembering how easy it is to be lazy. As lazy as you'd like to be. I wonder if you remember ever allowing your hips to relax. It's easy to just let your hips go there too, isn't it? It's also easy to forget, but you don't have to remember. You don't have to remember anything for now but relaxing. As you continue to relax, you may notice that your mind might begin to wander off at times. You may feel as though you're daydreaming and not really listening to my words, and that's okay. Your thoughts may drift in and out of your mind, as though they are clouds floating by on a beautiful spring morning. And it's okay if you want to follow any of those clouds and just sort of drift away into a forgetfulness. Because it is easy to forget, but we don't have to remember. For now, it's just time to be lazy, as lazy as you'd like to be. As you're being lazy, you may find that even the tiny muscles around your eyes are beginning to relax and loosen all by themselves. Much like the wax that drips down the side of a lit candle, you may feel your body begin to sink into the support beneath you. It is normal and natural to feel a sense of heaviness, sinking or melting as you relax. 
It is also normal to feel a wonderful sense of lightness as you become more and more free from any tension or stress. This is an opportunity for you to just be, and you deserve this opportunity. Perhaps you notice a slight tingling or numb sensation in your fingers or hands, arms or legs, and this is very normal. You can just enjoy it. Your body and your mind drifting now, easily and freely. You may feel a bit of detachment, both mentally and physically, as you allow yourself to do nothing at all. Your own inner mind is already coming up with solutions at your own pace, as quickly as you are ready. You may realize that you're getting closer and closer now even though you don't really care whether or not you're getting closer. Because this deep level of relaxation allows you to be carefree. And so now as I count from five down to one, you may relax deeper and deeper still. Five, finding it more and more automatic to relax. Four, as you relax automatically, you automatically relax. Three, you may even be surprised at your wonderful ability to relax. Two, just simply enjoying this peaceful time for you. And speaking of time, we've come to one incredibly peaceful place in time in your body and in your mind has anyone ever told you that every snowflake that falls from the sky is unique that there's never been in all of time a snowflake that's like another. The intricate and beautiful snowflakes that flutter and dance to their destination are changing all along their way. Their journey toward the earth is a journey of change. Falling, drifting and dancing with the wind in beautiful harmony down. Down and down. That's right, in all of time, there's never been a snowflake that's the same as another. Or a raindrop. Did you know that all the raindrops are different too? You can even imagine just what it's like to hear the pitter-patter of a gentle rain. As the raindrops fall from the sky, they are leaving a very special trail of uniqueness behind them. A path to never be duplicated again by another raindrop in the same way. The raindrops too are directed along their journey of change, guided by the wind. They too fall down, down and down, until they finally reach a place of rest. There are other things that are unique in nature. Trees are unique as well. I'm sure you can remember many different types and shapes and colors of trees. All of the trees that have ever lived on this planet, or ever will, are all each unique and will never be duplicated. They are rooted firmly in the ground as they grow toward the sky in an effort to reach new heights. Let's not forget the sunsets and sunrises, one of the most gorgeous things we may ever see. A harmony of color may be even more beautiful than our favorite song. 
Sometimes, while I'm looking at a beautiful sunset, I can almost hear the beauty of the color in my own effortless breath. That soft and gentle tune allows me to experience a calmness, peacefulness, feeling so safe and protected. You are just as unique as the snowflake, raindrops, and trees of our world. There will never be another you. And you change with each and every passing moment. You're not the same person you were 10 years ago. Five years ago. one year ago, or even one moment ago, our experiences, our surroundings, our bodies, our perspectives and perceptions are forever changing. Isn't it wonderful to know we have the ability to change? Infinity is reality, isn't it? If all of the snowflakes raindrops, trees, sunsets, and sunrises are unique. If all of them that have ever existed and all that ever will be, will all be different. That is infinity, isn't it? And it is a reality that they are all unique. And our thoughts create our reality, don't they? What we believe is what is true for us, isn't it? And our thoughts are limitless. We can have an infinity of changing thoughts and feelings. If our thoughts are limitless, and our thoughts create our reality, then isn't it exciting to know that we have limitless possibilities? And so we remember that our experiences, our surroundings, our bodies, our perspectives and perceptions are forever changing. And we have the ability to change from limitless possibilities into a reality that we choose. And this is your time to choose. And you can take all the time you want. Taking your time to journey through the meadows of infinity. And deep within these meadows, you come to your peaceful place. This may be a place you've been before. or perhaps a place you imagine. You'd like to stay forever. You may notice that in this place you are calm and confident. You feel peaceful yet full of energy and motivation. In this very special place, you enjoy life as it was meant to be enjoyed. Here in the meadows of infinity, you are healthy and confident. In this place, you may realize that you can enjoy your life more. Feeling of freedom, knowing that you can do anything and everything that you want to do with no restrictions, no obstacles, no distractions. Here you enjoy complete clarity of body and mind, complete creativity. Here you really enjoy your independence. Independence is a wonderful thing, isn't it? And you have decided today that you are going to be independent from tobacco. You have decided that you will be free of the smoking or chewing habit. 
to be certain you are firm in your decision to become tobacco free. You can make a commitment now to yourself. You have decided that you have had enough. You are no longer going to allow tobacco to control your life, to control your decisions, to control your habits. Because enough is enough. Up to this point, tobacco has actually been dominating you and telling you what to do. You're ready to take control back. You are ready to be completely independent from tobacco entirely because enough is enough. You realize that tobacco is not your friend. It's never done anything for you except destroy your health and steal your money. Of course tobacco is not your friend. It provides you with nothing of value. As a matter of fact, tobacco has been destroying you bit by bit. With each and every cigarette or each and every dip that's been polluting your body, been robbing, stealing from you. Stolen not only money, but time. Time is so valuable. Tobacco's taken away from you time that you cannot recover. It serves no purpose. Enough is enough. Go ahead now and silently just say that sigh to yourself. Enough is enough. And only you know why your time is so valuable. You know exactly what you like to do with your time. You may have people in your life that you intend to spend wonderful quality time with. You may realize just how important it is to have more time for these very special people in your life. You may have hobbies and interests that you'd like to enjoy. You may be excited to know that you may be more efficient and more productive with more time enjoying more time each and every day tobacco free enjoying more days in your life for time time to do the things that you really want to do you have so many abilities and talents more than you've ever even begun to use you can now use your own abilities and talents to serve you to assist you you may know of several different things that you can do to enjoy your time that has nothing to do with tobacco. You may be surprised at just how easy it is to decide to choose to do something else. Perhaps you'll find yourself drinking more water. Maybe just taking a few moments for yourself. A break. A chance for more freedom. Perhaps you'll find yourself taking even better care of yourself with that extra time. It is the power of your own mind to make that healthy decision. You will find your own way, discovering new and healthy things to enjoy. You may be surprised that you, because you've made this wonderful decision to be healthier, you'll naturally make even better choices in other areas as you remember that your body rewards you for treating it well. This becomes a cycle of progress. As you enjoy the positive changes in your body, you'll take better and better care of it. And as you take better and better care of your body, it will reward you more and more. And so just for now, I'd like for you to think of all of the wonderful reasons that you've decided to become tobacco free. You know exactly why this is so important to you. Now just take a moment and say goodbye to tobacco entirely. One final goodbye, saying goodbye any way that's comfortable for you. If you'd like, you can imagine destroying the tobacco. Perhaps you want to bury it deep into the ground so that it can never come back and tempt you or anyone you care about. You can imagine putting it on a rocket ship and sending it into orbit 
Maybe you want to blow it up in an explosion. It doesn't really matter how you say goodbye. You can just simply wave goodbye if you'd like. All that really matters is that you take a moment and say a final goodbye. And doesn't that feel good? And you can just really enjoy that freedom. Kind of just puts a smile on your face, doesn't it? And that feeling of freedom allows you now to relax even deeper. Relaxing even more now, even more deeply than before. Remembering just how easy it is to be lazy and let go. As you relax more now, I want you to pay particular attention to the fact that comfort is a state of mind. Your brilliant mind allowed you to become so relaxed and so comfortable here today. And you will find now that you will be able to achieve relaxation easier. Just simply by taking some time for you. Because it is easy to forget what we don't have to remember, you can just simply forget about tobacco now. You can just forget about it because all you really want to remember is that comfort is a state of mind. And so you'll find that early in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening or at night, whether you're in a car, talking on the phone, whether you're at home or at work, whether you're alone or with other people, no matter where you are, no matter what's going on around you, no matter what you're doing, you'll simply forget about tobacco. You may be pleasantly surprised today and every day at how automatic it is to be tobacco free. It's as though you you could have gone back in time to a time just before you ever had tobacco and had made a different decision, a different choice. Because we know that so much of our happiness in life depends upon the choices we make. And so you can imagine having made a different choice and moving forward through life completely tobacco free moving forward in time from that time long ago. Moving forward in time through all kinds of wonderful decisions. Good times, not so good times. Moving forward through time, through some of your accomplishments. Having never even touched tobacco. Coming back all the way now to here, completely tobacco free. And congratulations, you are now completely, totally free of the tobacco habit. Here, now, and forever. And from here, you can take a moment and return to the meadows of infinity, to that wonderful place where you can change from limitless possibilities into a reality that you choose. What is special about this place? In this place, you are calm and confident. In this place, you really enjoy this wonderful feeling of freedom. Because here and now you are free. Free to become the kind of healthy, confident person you really want to be. Free to remain the kind of healthy, confident person you really admire. And so remember that just like the snowflake, you are unique. And you have the ability to change 
from limitless possibilities into a reality that you choose. And so as I count now from five back up to one, you are going to begin to feel wonderful, lighter as though a weight's been lifted up and off of your shoulders, rested and refreshed as though you've had a wonderful nap, bringing with you up and out of hypnosis exactly what you can use for your continued change and progress. Five feeling more and more calm, more and more confident and capable with each and every passing day. Four, slowly, gradually coming back from the meadows of infinity into a new realm of possibilities. Three, becoming more and more aware of everything around you. Becoming more and more aware of your abilities and talents, your ability to choose health. And happiness, too, come all the way back up, excited for this wonderful cycle of progress to begin. And one, just as you're ready, take in a nice, deep, and easy breath and allow your eyes to open. All right, now you've got your eyes open and you are back in the present moment with me. Uh, I just want to say congratulations. Um, congratulations to you on making this change. Um, congratulations for being this version of you that you've wanted to be. You're now here. Uh, be sure to remember to use those affirmations. Whatever you choose for that affirmation to be, you know, use it daily at least 10 times every morning, at least 10 times in a row every night. You can do this anytime. You can be doing affirmation while you're driving. You can be doing it while you're waiting in line, while you're brushing your teeth, while you're really not doing anything else. Let's be sure you are totally tobacco free for the rest of your life. Use that affirmation. Thank you again so much for being a part of this today. I am truly inspired by all of you who have decided to make this change and honored to have been a part of it for you, with you. Um, definitely give me some feedback here. I want to hear how well you're doing. I want to hear, you know, a year from now, five years from now, hey, thanks for helping me that day. You know, five years ago, I'm still smoke free. I do this because I love to see people succeed. It is the most fulfilling thing. So I, the way that I, I enjoy that fulfillment is by getting that feedback. Um, enjoy the rest of your day.